Hello, everybody, and welcome to the uh, September 24th Open Crowbar Planning Meeting. Uh, as is normal, this is our, it's a bi, we have a weekly meeting with a bi-weekly cycle. So every other week we talk about uh, sprint planning objectives, and then the other weeks, the midweeks, we talk design topics uh, and review, review work in progress so that we actually can exchange ideas and adjust work. Uh, so our focus in this is GitHub issues. Oh, and then I'll pause for a second. Usually we work agenda a little bit before we start recording, but uh, if at the same time I have anything to add to the agenda, Pretty typical for our planning cycles. Um, can actually do this. Uh, so you'll notice we we actually went back and grouped things into different release uh, sprints and releases. Uh, I have time in here where I do want to talk about release planning because I, I I believe we're coming to a point where I'd like to close the broom release, um, but we're going to need to review what the what the deliveries are for that. Uh, so if I just look at room one, uh, all right, this this bug, I did not close this bug, so I'm going to move this to room two. Ah, uh, yikes. Um, I can do it like that. Yep. Uh, Victor, you said this was on hold. You were waiting for the poll to go go with the Nick 10 gig patterns. I don't remember what I was waiting for on that one. Uh, requested by Victor. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I just haven't done it yet. All right. Um, I've been working on files and raid stuff. Understand. Move it to broom two or camshaft. Um, just leave it in broom one. I can do it. It's incredibly trivial. Well, I'm gonna if it this. I'm trying to close broom one. So if it's not done, we're moving. Okay, it yeah, to broom move it two. to broom two then. <laughs> trying to trying to get some discipline in this. Uh, all right. Uh, sorry. RPM installation fails. Um, I thought this was closed. Randy, are you on the phone? I see him on the, the list. Um, I, my understanding is RPM install, installation is working, but I, I'm not ready to close the bug uh, without somebody doing it. Um, I haven't tested it in a long time. Yeah, I, I saw Randy was actually pinging questions about this. Um, so I, I know he's testing it. I just don't know where it stands. Um, let's potentially move that to room two. Um, uh, I guess I'll do it. Create missing repo dependency. Missing. I think this was done. And this was actually patched. And closed. Close issue. All right. Uh, UI Ready State, this, um, I believe you merged this patch. Hold on. I should do this as separate. Um, right, I'm, I need to work with. with Isaac can fix get that one fixed. Um, would fix. All right, so that that patch got merged. So we now have the menus for um, we now have the menu items uh, for this. So I'm going to close this. Any any concerns about doing that? Nope, not if it's already been merged. Uh, document using containers for workload development. I, I'm going to go ahead and move this all the way to camshaft uh, because I think that it's really a camshaft zero item anyway. Um, Icehouse upstreams from ready state. This is 
clearly going to be camshaft work. So I'm going to move that. Um, yike. Why did that? Oh, I accidentally moved. This is not the best UI. It's not a bad UI, but it's not the best UI. I can actually hear Scott's teeth grinding somewhere in the distance. Um, let me see him on my. Uh, so this milestone camshaft. Uh, bootstrap UI not updated for the. So this is uh, this is actually done. I was just waiting for somebody to validate it. Um, and hold on, let me demo it. Ooh. I think I have my environment. I, th I think I have my environment running. Uh, oh, it's six. Hold on. Ah, my typing is degrading before before your eyes. Hmm. Look at that. It actually signs in. Look at that! It converged. Wow. All right. Um, I can actually boot in, boot nodes with this. Um, ready state wizard right there off the menu. Hot dog. Look at that. There's no there's no uh, VMs in it right now. But, uh, and then so the ready state wizard under utilities bootstrap or sorry the bootstrap wizard. And I will show you what how this works so we can close it. So what what we when we change the attributes the screen had to get refactored. And so the way it works is if there's no admin network, you can, it gives you a button to create it. In this case, it exists, so it gives you a link. You have to assign an admin node, gives you a button. If there isn't, we have an admin node, so it's all good. These are the roles that are bound to the admin node, and I can add other ones if I wanted. Um, although you can't see them for I some would, reason. I would not do that, actually. Uh, I'm happy to remove that capability. Um, it's useful if you don't run so you're if you don't run the production bootstrapping script, then um, you need to be able to bind roles to it. But uh, Victor, if you if we want to add a bug and I'll I'll yank that, it's a trivial thing or have. I mean, bad. the thing is, if you don't bind crowbar admin node, it ain't gonna work ever. Well, you can't remove them, so these are already here. This is just to add it to extra ones. Oh, you can't see the list. So if I wanted to add OS installed or make it a Docker container node or oh, you know. Well, you, the thing is, you can't do those on admin nodes. Which what what can you add on admin nodes? Nothing. Then I will take. Right now, it. you can't add anything to, to okay. an admin node. I already buying Frank, all Frank, the roles. Hey, I want to. Give me a put a bug in for Broom One, and it will be gone. I'm still gonna. I still want to accept the story. But because uh, <laughs> yeah. pretty much um, pretty much the only role you should find to the admin node um, until you know we explicitly add something otherwise is crowbar admin node itself. All right, so here's here's the deal. I'm going to remove that section uh, or change it to say bound roles so you can see them, <laughs> and I can add logic that says if it doesn't have crowbar admin node, flag it. But um, I, I I don't know. I have to work through. I haven't worked through the walked through the workflows of uh, the zombie sort of the zombie mode install right now. Maybe this is just the way we do it. If you, you we assume you run production on that server, it turns that server into an admin node. This workflow is designed for if you're not in that case. Um, and I am going to remove the other options because well we tested that. Yeah, but... You should also remember that production.sh is a hack. It's a hack that's there solely so it's a hack that's there just for development purposes so that we don't have to manually do all the stuff it's doing automatically for us. Uh, and until we have somebody who doesn't use it, I, I, I have mixed feelings about showing it here. So I, if, please open a bug. Ask me to remove the adding uh, for, for uh Room dot two, and I will I will do that. Um, call it a bug, I'll, and we'll get it fixed. Uh, and then this is this is the other. So there's a set of attributes that um, are editable in this, and so um, the only one is DNS forwarders here, and so you could actually edit it and save it. Um, and this 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 review key attributes was the key was the the fundamental the, the important change. And then you can go to the anneal 
and watch all this stuff going. If um, if the admin, if you've created the admin role, it's not committed. You actually have to commit the deployment. There's a button for that too. Um, this is actually more interesting. You can run production.sh with the dash dash zombie uh, flag, which doesn't mark the admin node alive, um, which is the thing that gates the the work, the things from being set on it. Uh, that's way down deep in, in how. So the way Crowbar, just to put it on record, the way this works is we do a bunch of pre-configuration in production.sh uh, and against, so we create an admin server using the API. We do a whole bunch of configuration in production.sh, uh, which could be done manually if you didn't use production.sh. And then the last thing uh, that that script does is it marks the admin node as alive, at which point the annealer goes in and, and acts on it. Uh, and so there's a flag that you can set in production.sh that does all the work except marking the node alive, which I uh, uh, humorously uh, called zombie mode uh, because your server is not alive. And then you get to mark you mark it alive, and then it finishes the annealing. Okay. Uh, hopefully, it's a helpful description. But I'm going to go ahead and, and take this story as uh, Closed. That's all right. Been hanging there for quite a while. And I stopped that. Right. Okay. And Yay. there is a shiny issue. Hmm? What's the shiny issue? Oh, you got my shiny issue. So if I look at milestone yeah. broom two, work for broom well, two. I didn't put on a milestone. Let me do that. Oh, uh, uh, would you? I got it easy enough. Oh, you did it. There. That has a milestone. Then did you assign it to me? No. I did that too. Oh. Dar. <laughs> All right. Uh, assign it to me, please. It is. Thank you. Oh, that's cool. Do all issues. <sighs> all right. So. Uh, initial system configuration. Okay, this is the one you just added. CentOS 7, the port. Uh, I think that's a, a reasonable request for room. Actually, you know what? This is probably a camshaft request because uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't block I wouldn't block for BIOS on, on CentOS 7. Uh, inject public key on a target. I want to talk about that one. Uh, actually, it is. It should be a broom thing, Rob. But, if you want to make a broom yeah, three, go ahead. But yeah, uh, yeah. I'm sorry. I was I was lurking. Worries. Uh, it 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 would also be a good thing for um if Greg's almost done with the salt stack stuff he's been working on. Uh, it'd be a good thing for him to add. Okay. I can kind of help him out that way. He can familiarize himself with what the uh, provisioning looks like these days. Okay. I'm hoping. I'm. I, I'd like to see. Us close broom three be the last in the release, but um, so let me let me mark it October thirtieth at that then. I think I, that would the, make the a dates, lot of sense. The dates the dates are messed up, um, but we need we need to figure out the dates. But um, my my goal for this is that we're close we're closing broom one today. Uh, so, ah, the calendar's weird. So this day, so the 24th. Uh, oh, that's, yeah, end. Due date, okay. Wow, it's very symmetrical. All right, and so this one, this date is clearly, we need to fix. I think, I guess we're gonna consider Broom 2 a two week or from that perspective. I guess if we're doing this bi-weekly, we should. Let's consider it a two-week sprint. So 
So you're considering those milestones sprint effectively. That's what I'm. That's that's exactly what I was thinking. Okay. Right? Yeah, I remember discussing it a while ago, so it makes sense. Um, and then, what? Well, yeah, and then camshaft. I'm hoping that we can see broom three as the end of the broom sprint and the start of the camshaft sprint, but that comes back to us having the community uh, discussion, um, the, the release milestones discussion. Right, back to issues. All right, so did that get moved back? Inject public key, convert documentation to, to Markdown. Uh, I don't see Mike on the call, so I don't know if we can commit this one or not, but I'd, I'd like to see this done before the release. Um, and then we need to pull, pull all the UI, the, the code generation stuff out is included in that. Uh, convert UI pages to refresh. I'll work with um, Meshius on that. Might be able to sign him now. Uh, Add interface UI. All right, that's a bug. I need to fix that. This is our Nick. Anything look in here that's um, this one I can fix. This one I I'll look at if I can fix it. I'll fix it in that sprint. Uh, Victor, I think you're actually doing this now. I don't think this is blocked anymore, is it? So the the item in discussion is hardware workload. Um, uh, the RAID part of that is done, yeah, and I'm working on the I'm working on parts of the BIOS part. Okay. Okay. Um, so I think the only thing that we're doing is we're not making claims about specific gear. Um, but yeah, don't, don't make actually, claims about specific jigs because I actually I actually wrote a RAID jig to handle doing. Uh, grade configuration. So this this looks like it's now is not working. Um, any systems uh, with. Um, which tool sets are we are we enabling? The Mega CLI? Uh, Mega CLI is the first one. Um, next on the list would be uh, the SAS IRC U based stuff. If I ever get a hold of a, if I ever get a hold of the a controller that that, uh, that supports. Okay. And then next on the list would be uh, whatever other RAID controllers people are interested in. Okay. Uh, we, maybe, we only um, we only need upgrade. one right now. What's and what about for BIOS? Um, BIOS will probably still just be Dell R series here uh, via WSL. Oh, okay. I don't have an so exit bar of the other stuff, and it turns out that uh, for Super Micro, there's actually additional licenses crap that you have to purchase for certain systems in order to do remote uh, BIOS configuration. Ow. At least based on the documentation that I've been able to find, if anyone has anything other different. You know, that'd be good to know. So even like those little those mini ITX boards would need additional licenses. Yeah. I didn't see that in the. Well, I mean, for the mini ITX boards, I didn't even see uh, I didn't see anything about being able to configure them um, by any method other than uh, driving the the BIOS setup or going in and doing the BIOS setup screen. <laughs> okay. So we have out of band control, but we don't have um, BIOS configuration. That's strange. I'm, that's 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 what IPMI gets you. It doesn't really get you out of band configuration, other than for a certain narrowly defined things. Good to know. All right, so that means we we need on the community. Let me make the list that. Uh, so we're saying is super micro. Uh, BIOS config? Uh, we're not saying anything whatsoever about Super Micro BIOS config right now because no one's asked for it. Right. 
No, no, we're, this is this is a note about, uh, op, this is an observation. Right. Uh, okay, that's fine. And for what we use the micro boxes for, we actually don't need to figure the BIOS. I mean, we mainly use them so we have a cheap hardware target to poke around with IPMI stuff that wasn't the Dell. Yep. I, no, I was, and I agree, and I was hoping that there'd be some super micro universality uh, towards those machines, but it's fine. Uh, issue. Well, I mean, I haven't done an exhaustive review of the docs of those little boards yet. Uh, and add missing documentation areas. Uh, all right, so is there anything in this that's missing that the people are planning to one that's not included in this list or that wor is work that we don't think can be completed in the next two weeks? Mm, I think I've got all the work that I can really handle in the next I think so. I think there's, we're not showing uh, the Chef Metal work in this list. And we're not showing the salt work. So I mean, some, somewhere I didn't. Where's all milestones? How do I unfilter? Oh. Okay. Uh. I thought we. I thought. Salt, I thought I wrote a salt story. Well, there's a salt uh, pull request that's been merged. Add salt stack. Oh, this got closed. So the salt stuff is uh, is effectively done. So we're 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 not we're not doing additional work work with salt right now. Yeah, that's so why I was saying if uh, Greg doesn't have anything else to do, um, you know, letting him add these into some support would be a good, uh, a good sort of exploratory exercise. I think that makes sense. And the other thing that we were doing from an exploratory, uh, looking at the pack, at pack stack integration. Oops. Um, yeah. But I don't, I don't really want to create that as a, as a work item unless it was explored, just created an exploratory. Scott, what's what's your thought here? Sent us seven. Sorry, I had to oh, grab this. the mute button. It was like seven oh, layers deep on my phone. Um, uh, in particular, to what? As far as uh, hitting the uh, the CentOS seven support? Yeah, well, I just pushed that back to to uh, room two. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think that's cool. Okay, and I we didn't we didn't put a story in for Chef Metal. I thought no, maybe we did. I thought I had one. Oh, that's frustrating. All right, let me. Add, we're 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 supposed to demo the Chef Metal stuff, um, so we need a story for it. Um, be nice to have a have a. So let me let me throw this in as a newish new ah, request. Sorry, Just clicking wrong, the wrong button. Oh, you know what? I wrote a lot a lot about this, and then it didn't make it in as a story. Um, I don't know if I want to put everybody through watching me copy this over. But so what I'm going to do is I'll sign it to me. Uh, call it room two. Enhancement. Okay. And then there's actually there's a specific thing that I wanted to talk through um, 
as a uh, room two item, which is this SSH key, public SSH key injection. So we, we actually need to talk about this one a little bit, Victor. Um, make sure people understand where it is. Although uh, the people who need to who wanted to consume this are not on the not on the call. Okay, so I understand the feature. That makes sense. Right. So what what Victor was what Victor said was the admin node has this information in in it in one of these uh, key sets. Do you know which one? I'm looking at it. Okay. Network admin. Network admin. Interface maps. Provision oh, yeah. access. Key? Um, yeah, uh, Crowbar Provisioner Server Access Keys. Yeah, if you just add a if you just add a public key to um, that list. Yep. If you add it to that list. Yeah. If you add it to that hash, then uh, everything in that hash has or uh, should have will be set up with uh, root access on all the managed nodes. Right, and so there's a, there's a separate, so that's already working. Uh, the, only, yeah, the caveat right now is you have to do that before you uh, bring up the node. Uh, nodes that are already, that have already been brought up won't um, right. won't get an updated list of the access keys. Hey, there's the API call. Look at that; it's so pretty. All right, all right. So it's it's a you no, know, it's a behavior issue that I think Jason is pretty. Been a lifetime yeah, and issue, just to right? change that, just uh, you know, add it, give you a new key, a unique name, and add it into that uh, hash. That's basically it. And any new nodes that are discovered will have that key injected into them at all points in the lifespan where we reboot them or set up SSH. Right. So So this story is really about, um, let me refine the story. Because uh, what this, this is saying, I want to inject into the nodes authorized file to end existing. Mention node after discovery. Uh, let me change this too. Oof. And then, so from that perspective, I I don't I think we could move this out of the sprint. Um, since we have a workaround for it. Is that that unreasonable from a work planning perspective. Yeah. Yeah, and the longer term fix for this would just be to refactor what I'm doing in the provision to be its own kind of standalone role. Right now it's part of the provisioner because that's uh where we initially needed it. Right. Uh, I'll add it into the notes here. We don't we don't want to rerun the provision rule. Okay. And then from that perspective I'm gonna move it I'm I, I think moving it to broom three is probably appropriate. 
not all the way to camshaft because I think it might be a, a, a needed for it needed for the camshaft um, before the camshaft release. But, uh, it's this this to me is a um, actually, you know what I'm going to move it to camshaft and we'll consider it a nice to have feature if it makes it into broom. Scott, is that reasonable to you? Yeah, I think so. I mean, the right, workaround. Given the fact that there's a workaround. Yeah, I mean, for the cases that we're going to use it for, as long as you uh, put it in there before you discover the nodes that you're going to wind up putting pack stack or whatever on, and uh, right, easily so be injected into the workflow automatically. Okay. Um, so from that perspective, what I what I think we should do is this uh, document. Oof, been typing Docker too much. Uh, SSH key injection workaround. And since Judd needs this, I will assign it to Judd. Um, although Greg could pick it up too. Uh, what was the issue number? Anybody? 230. Uh, documentation. Woo All right, so we've we've planned for broom two. That's all good. Uh, I have ad hoc stuff that we can get to. Chef Metal. Uh, we're going to have to demo on next Wednesday. Salt stack integration uh, demo next Wednesday. So we have some demos coming during the uh, review meeting, the design meeting. Open stack. Great. Scott, do you want to talk about camshaft and and thoughts for that? Are you? Is it... uh, yeah, I can I can briefly go over what I'm thinking about it. I think it might also make sense just to um, you know as part of the design meeting just go through a little bit of roadmap work. Um, so perhaps we can do that next week. But the the basic thing I was thinking of up to this point is, is that um, you know Broom is effectively the base hardware provisioning release, right? It brings you up through um, through the the BIOS and the RAID functions and uh, you know basic network setup and those sort of components. Um, when we start looking at camshafts, that's really where we're starting to look at uh, integration points that were that were effectively um as open crowbar is moving along it's handing off to these other uh these other uh infrastructures such as you know salt the salt integration um back stack uh those sort of functions so i think that's uh you know that's what i'm proposing that we target for uh for for the camshaft release but it's something we should discuss in the uh design session Right, so and I, I think this lines up to what our original roadmap was. We we wanted to get so at Anvil was the orchestration in VIL. Right, Broom Broom was about adding hardware provision to that. Campshaft is about integration points. So Packstack is this is going to allow um, OpenStack RDO. Right, and actually, I think we need to probably go back to Chef um, Community Cook Community should be the OpenStack uh, upstream. Dot, dot, dot. Uh, I think it's. I think we're not. It's not as clear on the Chef. You know, Chef Metal integration is really interesting, and I think we we definitely want to show it, but we need to see more community interest on this. Uh, salt stack uh, is next up as community interest too. So we want an MVP. So what I, I mean, it seems like we're leaving, we're exiting. So Scott, it seems like we have uh, MVPs for salt and chef metal. Uh, uh, t 
to to set up camshaft discussions, right? Uh, yeah, Fair I think that's pretty it. much what we're looking at is we have some work ahead uh, items, but primarily what we should be focused on is getting the uh, you know the the base rate and uh, and uh, hardware provisioning functions um, into the system as part of Broom. Right, the the camshaft release is really targeted towards those integrations. If we have um, some proof of concepts and some early work or some MVPs um, that are happening, you know, that are happening now as we're getting people up to speed or whatnot, um, then that's mm -hmm. fine. Okay. Yeah, I I think that the MVPs are helpful to get funding for camshaft. Right, part of part of what we're looking to do is have um, community, you know, projects, funded projects. Mm -hmm. But it also is a, a you know a good place for I mean some of the underlying components that we're doing um, really only makes sense when you you move it up through the uh, through the stack mm -hmm. and it, it you know it makes sense to work up through the through the stack in at least some limited fashion for some of these components. Right, and I'd love to see what the what the app is for Salt Stack on this. Um, what about things like alternate or additional operating systems? You, is, is there a list on that? You, you thinking of that for camshaft? These are really cool. Uh, well, no, those are really broom functions. Um, I mean, you know, it, these things are, you know, they, they'll muddy up, right? I mean, we're obviously not going to implement every operating system we think people could possibly want without a, uh, you know, without a driving need to do so. Right. Um, so as time goes on, right, they'll, they'll get dropped in. But um, from a release really type of theme thing based off of, you know, what I've just said, right, and it's and again we haven't all gone over and agreed with it. Um, you know, it would be the 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 base you know function laydowns, uh, which would kind of be what we would do in Broom, which is why I was suggesting that we do the uh, the Sense Seven stuff in Broom Three. Makes sense. I was I'm thinking more like CoreOS as an uh, as a it's because it's almost a platform. Yeah, that might even merit its own release cycle. Something like CoreOS. Yeah. I mean, CoreOS, you know, I I like it from a theoretical standpoint, but it's not something that I'd really want to uh, provide as supported uh, operating system slash platform slash whatever until someone uh, you know, actually asks for it. It isn't, you know, just okay. asks for it because it sounds cool. So... Did we lose audio? No. I hear you. No, sir. Okay. I'm tired. Okay. I mean, ideally, we have one of the things that uh, needs to be on our to-do list for sending up technical debt is going back and uh, refactoring how the provisioner works to, you know, kind of brainstorm about if we still need our current provisioner, we could, you know, just drive something like Razor or, you know, modularize our current provisioner layer or something along those lines. Interesting the current thing. provisioner is kind of held together by spit and bailing wire. It has uh, a lot of functionality, but it's not the easiest thing in the world to uh, extend or to tie into or drive programmatically. Uh, I I'm not sure that any any of the other ones are much better. Yeah, I know. That's why I would want to, uh, you know, spend a little bit of time going over going over them and compare the difficulty of using them versus uh, you know, refactoring the current version. Yeah, I, I was I was actually more interested in embedding some of the HashiCorp tools, uh, like con the the console integrations I think are interesting um, and the, 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 yeah, the, the I'm Dino. very interested in those too I just don't want to embed them to the point where we can't not use them because like uh, the odds of getting something like console on a switch is uh, tricky on a switch would that be required I don't want to I don't want to inadvertently make it required on our end no Okay, I think we need a we need a design discussion at some point about what you think con we would use console 
to do? Um, well, I what I want to start off doing with it is just mon monitoring the uh, roles that we deploy. And start off just doing that. Okay, but that requires console agent. Yeah. Well, I mean, a anything you do with console requires having console on whatever is being monitored. Oh. Um, I mean, that's that's the same as that, that's that's kind of the same thing as like with any other monitoring. So, unless. Um, right. That makes. You, sense. you have to have something that runs the check. So this comes back to the fact that we we in Crow, in Open Crowbar we didn't put Nagios back in the system, so console is the alternative for Nagios from that perspective. Um, there was there was another HashiCorp tool for image building that you were looking at, and I I was assuming that would be on the technical debt list too. But yeah, yeah. Packer. Packer. I think it's Pack like that Packer. P a c k e r. Like that. P a c k e r. E r. E r. E -R. Oh. Wow. There. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've been looking uh, at uh, Packer as kind of a way to um, distribute a um, virtual machine version of our admin node. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, so some of this some of this allows you to do the um, image image building, which makes it a little bit more flexible um, from restaged images. Uh, and so, if you don't know HashiCorp, HashiCorp is the are, is the vagrant people. As a matter of fact, their site looks like it is vagrant. There you go. Um, I know you make Vagrant. Um, and so a lot of their stuff has the feel for, like Packer has the feel for a Vagrant, a component for Vagrant. Uh, cool. Um, I feel like we've covered planning. I don't see a need to extend the time if we've covered all the topics. Uh, these will hold, we're holding off roadmap. I think we covered in some detail, but not as much as Scott as I'm hoping we'll go to in the future. And OpenStack options, uh, I can talk about a little bit ad hoc. Um, so I'm, I'm I'm hearing people in the community and trying to work work through some of the, the interest on how we're going to pull OpenStack as a workload back into Crowbar. Um, and we want to do it without it being as entangled as it was in Crowbar 1. So it seems like there's a lot of interest for people who want CentOS to use Packstack and RDO, uh, which makes sense uh, to me. And so we're sort of talking to people who are going through that path uh, and looking for an RDO Packstack on CentOS 7 uh, is one of one of the paths. And then uh, I'm still uh, I'm still optimistic that uh, the SUSE team is interested in, in taking their cookbooks and bringing them over to Open Crowbar. Uh, they might I, I don't know that you know they want to they want to be part of the OpenStack Chef community. Although I don't know that at this point it's really feasible to reconcile uh, the work that SUSE has done with what's in the upstream community and watching the chef upstream community and and trying to get their stuff through a gate um, i'm also scratching my head a little bit about what a gate would look like for chef or puppet deployment uh, cookbooks so uh, i'm 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 interested i'm happy to have one-on-one -on -one conversations i'm ha I'll, I'll stop talking in a second and, and open up the floor um, I really think we need to have some type of, of gate 
and, auto, and CI system around these workloads uh, to make them effective, but I think it's going to have to be a multi-node deployment different than, potentially different than the OpenStack uh, gate system. And that's, that's my pause for discussion. All right. Um, it's still it's still preliminary. I'm I'm just trying to get it out there because I I, I haven't heard anybody very happy with how the physical side of the deployment is going, um, and it seems to me that uh, we could we could actually play a really helpful role in without we being supporting these communities without having to be embedded in the communities. Uh, and so I'm I'm looking for people who can do be that bridge. Very simply. Makes sense. It, the only way the community forms is when people talk about it. All right. If there's no other comments, I'm happy to uh, wrap up the call. Give people back uh, ten, seven or eight minutes. Cool. Um, yeah? Are you going to have Time to uh, get to test the, uh, the rate bar clamp, I think, before the I, end of the week. I will make a point to get it done today. Okay. Uh, I was trying to spin up my environment. I actually might have to ping you about trying to get my, my environment working because it's hanging on that Docker. Did, did the team solve the Docker hang issue? What Docker hang issue? All right. It sounds like it's unique to me. Uh, let me purge all my Docker images and see if I'm just out of disk space. That's probably the that's the likely cause. I'll I'll, I'll bang on it right now. See if I can okay. get through and, and validate. How do okay. I know it worked, Victor? <laughs> if it ran successfully, do I consider that success, or can I inspect it some other way? You can inspect it by looking. Well, the way you, whenever the RAID configure role runs, it, it captures the list of uh, RAID volumes that it uh, created. Okay, right. And the list of the RAID volumes are there. And so at the, by default right now, you should, it should just show up with, uh, it should show all of your physical disks, and it should show a single, um, JPOD RAID volume and that RAID volume, you should be able to go on and go ahead and install an operating system. Oh, okay. So I, if I can install an operating system, then I'm happy, which I have yeah. been able I to mean, do. Yeah, I mean the the, the workflow the workflow will look like you uh you let the node discover. Okay. And then you add the crowbar installed node all to it. Uh -huh. Yep. And then uh, commit, and it should. Along the way, it should the RAID configure role should run, and it should uh, blow away any pre-existing RAID arrays and create the uh, create the minimum ones that it requires. That makes a lot of sense. So basically, it's parity with the VM at this point. Kind of, except VMs don't usually have RAID controllers we can bang on. Uh, I, I understand that, but I'm, <laughs> my workflow has parity to the VM. Before, I, my, my, my system was spin, and it wouldn't install an OS, of course. Yeah, I, I try to make it a point that uh, I don't want there to be any difference in, in the workflows unless you want to change it between messing around with VMs and messing around with physical hardware. All right, that's good. I will I will crank that through. All right. And uh, I got a document of my OpenStack options, and I think we're we're done. Cool. Thanks. Right, everybody, thank you. All right.